Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're going to be looking at it through the lens of the money supply or M2. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I'm sure many people here are very aware of the price chart for Bitcoin. We follow it on, on basically a daily basis. But something that we only check in on every few months, although admittedly maybe we should do it more frequently, is the price of Bitcoin divided by the money supply. Now, this one is not divided by M2, and I'm sure you are, are very aware of it, but you might wonder, well, what's the point of, of investigating the price action of Bitcoin as a function of the money supply? And the reason is because there's an argument to be made that risk assets trend higher with time sometimes not from any fundamental reason because it's more valuable, but just simply because there's more money in the system. And, and if, if there's more money, then people are going to put those dollars somewhere. And where are they going to put them? Generally speaking, they're going to put them into risk assets, try to help protect against the debasement of the fiat currency that's being printed. So if you look at, before we look at this as a function of the money supply, look at it with the, the S&P 500. Um, divided by M2. So this is the S&P 500 divided by M2. Now, again, remember, the S&P not divided by M2 looks like this, right? I mean, is it not just up and to the right? Okay. Now, look at it when you divide by M2. It's not really up and to the right in the same way. In fact, the value, the valuation that the stock market, the S&P 500 is at the current time is the same valuation that it was at in October of 2020 and in February of 2020 and in November of 2017 and in, in December of 2007 and June of 2002 and September of 1996. So to some degree, you can understand why we might be interested in, in how Bitcoin looks as a function of the money supply. If you sort of look at the S&P 500, with, with, with the exception of this rally over here during, you know, going into the dot-com crash, we've mostly been range-bound except for these two brief deviations, right? So the dot-com euphoria and the financial crisis. But we've really just been sort of range-bound here for a long time. Now, again, this is what Bitcoin looks like. What does it look like? Up and to the right, right? That's how we, that's how we like um, the chart to look when you're interested in an asset for the long term, up and to the right. But what, what happens if you divide it by M2? It looks like this. Now, it doesn't look nearly as bad as the S&P divided by M2, right? Just going sideways, uh, more or less, since the, the, you know, the mid to late 1990s. But one interesting thing is... If you look at Bitcoin divided by M2, and we actually covered this back in July, um, you know, this is actually right where Bitcoin found support before it rallied back on up. In fact, we have a video, I believe, basically a day before this rally started, um, where a lot of people, again, were, were calling for 20K back over here in the summer. Well, it was a possibility, of course. Um, the argument that we put out back then was like, we we're already retesting the prior all-time high, right? You know, you don't have to go back to 20K to retest the prior all-time high when you account for the money supply. We were already there at 28K, again, when accounting for, you know, M2. And so um, with this most recent rally, I thought it would be it would be interesting to see kind of where we are. And, and you can see that Bitcoin as a function of M2 has sort of rallied on up um, and, and if you know, you sort of draw this trend line here, just sort of across to sort of get this top and to get these bottoms. You can also see there was some hesitation around this level as well. So in order to get there, we're just a bit further away from it. But it does go to show you that you know sometimes when you look at it only as a function of of the price, it can leave out you know crucial crucial aspects. Okay, so again, look at where we tested it back in in July, Bitcoin. We came back down to 28K and then blasted off. It did not come down to this high. But again, with respect to the money supply, it did. Go back to the S&P 500. 
look at this. Look at where it has found support at this level. You know, back in the end of the dot com crash, the end of the dot com bear market in in 2002, and it also found support at that same level in March of 2020. We got rejected here in December of 2021. It got rejected at the same level in February of 2020. So even though the S and P 500 went up and to the right basically for you know a year and a half. When you account for M2, it basically just rallied back to where it was before the meltdown occurred. It, it, it really does make you pause and think for a minute, doesn't it? I mean, you know, we're so used to, of course, looking at things just denominated in U.S. dollars and not accounting for anything else. But again, accounting for, for M2, uh, you can see that, that there has been sort of this range here of the S&P 500. And when you go look at Bitcoin... We can see that we sort of broke out of this range for a little while. Sort of broke out of this range for a little while, but we did still technically see some of these same valuations going all the way back to to 2017, right? You know, it it sort of reminds me, you know, we've sort of talked before about gold and how it hasn't really gone anywhere in in a long time and and sometimes that happens with an asset class. You know, you we, like we did with Bitcoin not too long ago. You find yourself at a price that it was at like five years before, and and um, you, you kind of find yourself in the same boat as, as some of the some of the people who were bullish on gold for the last ten to fifteen years. And maybe that one's finally going to break out. But again, measuring this as a function of the money supply um, might be a a more useful tool. Um, sort of think about one thing to consider with the S&P divided by M2 is that it rallied back up to where it was in March 2020. So, you know, by the end of 2021, it basically just went back up to where it was in March 2020. But with Bitcoin divided by M2, you can see that um, it hasn't even gone down to that level, right? I mean, so, so Bitcoin is certainly outperformed, um, you know, a lot of these different asset classes as measured from sort of like right before uh, we saw this these, this catastrophic sell-off. Again, accounting for the money supply. But I would argue that, that when you account for M2, this level that we're coming into right now is going to be an interesting level because this is, pr this is what previously provided resistance back in 2017. Um, and it also provided support right here in 2021. And, and some sort of hesitation here back in sort of the summer of 2022. So keep an eye on this level uh, on TradingView. You can just divide it by, um, uh, you know, the money supply M2. And you can follow along to see uh, if Bitcoin can actually break out of this range or if it or if we just spend more time consolidating back down. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. But again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. See you next time. Bye.